I never made a film before. I never read a book on filmmaking. I actually never took a class in filmmaking or had a bucket list dream of making a film. But I went to lunch with my banker, Jeff Crowther, and I just started using his bank for my law firm. And over lunch, he told me the story about his son Wells, and I was just blown away. I literally thought it was one of the most amazing stories I'd ever heard. And in quick succession, I said to myself, everyone needs to hear the story. I want to share the story with everyone. So while there are filmmakers that look for stories, this was a story that found the filmmaker. Let's talk more about Wells and what a special, special man he was. Um, for those who are not familiar or who have not seen the film, he had multiple times where he could have gotten out and saved himself, but he went back in and that was not his job that day. He was not a firefighter, although I understand he has been, he's one of the few to be posthumously given the honorable firefighter title, That's something that uh, he wanted to do at some point in his life was to become a firefighter. But But tell people, about Wells and, and what he did that day. So Wells was 24. He worked on the 104th floor of the South Tower. He was an equities trader for a company called Sandler and uh, O'Neill Partners. And uh, after the first building got hit, which was the North Tower, he called his college roommate and told him he was going to get out. And then his building got sh struck minutes later. And so he left a voicemail for his mom and he said that he was okay. And that was the last that they heard from him. And so eight months passed where they had a, a memorial service and then they located his body in the lobby and then they had a private funeral service. And then in May of 2002, so now we're eight months past 9-11, um, there was a New York Times article with survivors and what they saw, how they got out. And Allison, who never gave up looking for her son, anything, any information about him, read this article, and in there were two women who both said that they were led up and out by a man who had a red bandana over his face. And as soon as she read that, she knew that was Wells because he always carried a red bandana. It was a habit he got into. His friends would tease him about it, but he had it. He played lacrosse. He had it under his helmet. Uh, he used it to wipe up spills, and it was just his little thing that he had. And so she sent photos to both the women. Ling Young and Judy Ween, who positively ID'd Wells as the man that saved them both, and then met with these women. And through their accounts, uh, the Crowthers were able to piece together the last hour of, of their son's life, his, his finest hour. He uh, put out fires on the 70th floor, which was the sky lobby where the United Airlines plane struck. He uh, extricated people that were trapped. And then he led a group down from uh, 78 to 61, carrying a woman on his shoulders. He left that group in clean air and safety and went back up, led another group down, went about five flights, went back up a third time and let yet others out. In, in my research, I have found, I believe, 10 people that he saved on that day. 10 people who were in the upper reaches, who were at or above where the plane hit. So statistically, we're likely to die. Only 18 people survived at or above where the plane struck the South Tower, and well saved at least 10 of those 18 people. It's absolutely incredible, the selflessness that was on display um, that day. And I know that Wells, unfortunately, was in the lobby of the South Tower when the building collapsed and he did not survive. And that red bandana that you speak of, I know is on display. I've seen it at the 9-11 Museum. What do you believe is Wells's legacy? Well. So you, you mentioned the lobby, which is important. His body was found in the lobby and his family and friends were frustrated. Like, why didn't he get out? He was only a few feet from safety, a few hundred feet. And then they found out how he was with a group of firefighters that had just called in that they were going up to 78 with the jaws of life to help people up there. So they realized very quickly that Wells was actually going back up a fourth time with this firefighter group to help yet other people. So he certainly could have saved himself that day and he chose to give his life to help others. And that's why he was bestowed the honor of being a New York City honorary firefighter. What And what do you believe should be his legacy when people think of and hear the name Wells Crowther? I think someone of, who's selfless, selflessness, caring, uh, heroic, courageous, those are the values that Wells personifies. I made my film and I was passionate sharing this story because I wanted to encourage others to just think a little bit less about themselves, a little bit more about others. 
It could be as simple as giving up your seat on the subway or bus or holding a door open for someone who's coming in the same building as you. Just doing little acts of kindness and and there's all, all ways that we can improve ourselves. And I felt Wells' story was such a sterling example of that. For sure. Are there other ways in addition to this film that, that you've made that you are helping to keep his memory and legacy alive and what happened on that day 20 years ago? Yeah, I'm always sharing Wells' story. I'm speaking tonight in Chicago about Wells, and uh, I'm speaking in Fort Lauderdale on Saturday night uh, about Wells. I um, continue to maintain my Facebook page. We have like 15,000 fans, uh, uh, followers that uh, get updated about things. Um, you know, there's different events where people honor Wells, and we post photos of that. And I feel like I'll be spending the rest of my life sharing Wells' story and his values to as many people that will listen. You never met, obviously, uh, Wells Crowthers, yet he has become a, a pretty big part of your life, Matt. Um, if, if you were able to say something to him, what, what would it be? I love you. Yeah. It's yeah. incredible. He was, uh, you know, captain of his hockey team, always thought of others first. This was not surprising to his friends and family when they found out what he did that day. Um, needless to say, what I think is a truly amazing about the story is that a piece of fabric, this bandana, changed the perspective on his family and friends' uh, feelings about the loss. Obviously, it didn't take away their pain, but it allowed them to manage their pain, give them some direction and some pride in the fact that he had free will, that he used his last hour in a selfless manner, he was courageous. And certainly when you lose someone and you don't know what happened and then you find out these amazing qualities that he displayed in his last hour, it certainly shifts your perspective. And all eight months after the fact, so I just think it's just an incredible story on, all, on many accounts.